over this bridge and like their experience going to a mission school. And I was, was so inspired by the, the way that he tells stories, the way that he captures it. Jasper is a, an incredible photographer. His, his work, you got to follow him on Instagram, at P-S-T-R Jasper, Pastor Jasper, P-S-T-R Jasper. You'll check out some of his Instagram stuff. Um, his work has been featured many times in uh, National Geographic. A lot of times when you see photos like that, that's usually stock photography, except for all the photos that I'm sure Jasper is going to be sharing, he actually took. And so he's traveling all around the world doing some amazing stuff. I remember, uh, I remember just being inspired by Jasper's journey of faith. He's talked about the time that uh, he went to Paris with like $11 in his wallet, not knowing where he was going to spend that night. And he was there for several weeks, and God provided and was able to work. He told me about the time that he was in Papua New Guinea, and uh, it was his last day or expected last day on, on that trip. So he gave away all his clothes and his food to the locals to kind of be, you know, be generous. And so he goes to the airstrip just to find out that the pilot had left him behind. And so he had to survive in the jungle for three days after having given away all of his stuff. And uh, these are just some of the stories. And I'm, I'm hoping that Jasper gets to share not only just some of his films, but some of his stories about what God's been doing through his ministry. It's, it's some of the most inspirational stuff. I know that you'll be challenged and you'll be encouraged by it. You'll laugh, you'll cry, you'll be moved. It's going to be incredible. I don't know if that's all true, but I think you're going to enjoy it nonetheless. So uh, let's give Jasper a round of a hand uh, and a round of applause. What's the word? Yeah. Hand. yeah. And, uh, all right. Thank you, Justin. <laughs> How are you guys doing? Good. Good? You guys sleeping? <laughs> the worst part of speaking is when you're speaking after lunch. That's very difficult. But we'll try. I hope and pray that God will bless us this afternoon. I'm very happy that God has given me an opportunity to at least talk to you guys uh, for a very short and brief time. Uh, Justin, actually, uh, we were talking about two years ago. I was in Philly. I don't have a return ticket to Seattle. And so he was like, hey, I'm going to do this program. You know, you might want to come. I, I just knew that I'm actually speaking, yes, uh, last night. And so I was like, okay, sure, why not? Um, uh, so I flew here and uh, flying up to Seattle. So I'm very happy and very impressed. You know, um, you guys, or this church specifically, has an amazing media ministry. And I just want to say that. You know, I wish I'm part of your church too. <laughs> you know, in, even in, in, in Asia, we don't have that much budget for filmmakers or content creators. And I would say this as a church as a whole, maybe, <laughs> we tend to not support media creatives and to see a church that actually supports young people and people who is in a creative field to do content is such an inspiring thing you know it's very refreshing i'm re really impressed by your cameras you know I, I can only wish to buy those cameras unless i sell my kidneys <laughs> but but you know <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm really i'm really i'm really happy for you guys and uh, you know by god's grace i hope you can make content that's amazing you know very very impressed again my name is Jasper, and you roll your R because we're colonized by the Spaniards, so I have a Spanish last name, Iturriaga. Um, I'm a digital nomad. I don't know if you don't, what that means. That means I don't really have a place that I live in. I live out of a suitcase. Anything that does not fit my suitcase does not fit my suitcase and give it away. <laughs> you know, so I've been living out of the suitcase for about four and a half years and just creating content and survive wherever I am. You know, and so currently I'm here, I'm also helping Justin create content, and so that's what I do. I'm a photographer, cinematographer, I, I'm a filmmaker, and right now I do a lot of photography. I love photography, and I'll show you some of those pictures. This, the, the title of, a, of our topic, or the thing I want to share to you, is I entitled it, The Art That Faith Made. Because, number one, I just want to say, I did not go to art school or filmmaking school or photography, photography school. I only studied everything that I've learned and I want to share to you through YouTube, the University of YouTube. And so I, I actually have a theology background. I'm a pastor by trade. I don't know if we want to call that trade, <laughs> by calling. <laughs> so I used to be a pastor. In fact, let me give you a little background. I was raised in a Seventh-day Adventist home. My mom and dad got converted from... Catholicism to Adventism. Then I got baptized because everyone got baptized in the family. And also I was forced to be baptized, but I was living life in a very nominal, cultural, 70 Adventist home. That means I don't eat pork, I don't eat shrimps, I don't eat um, 
crabs and all the cockroaches in the sea, but I don't really know why. You know, there's no reasons why I'm, I'm not eating it. So I go to church, no reasons why. And so I was very nominal, cultural, Seventh-day Adventist. When I, was seven, uh, when I was 17, I was taking a major in biology in a boarding school in the Philippines. It's called Central Philippine Adventist College. Right before the second semester of enrollment, I woke up in the hospital. The doctor came up and said, hey, Jasper, we check out your brain. You had a tumor on the left side of your brain. So I had a tumor on the left side of my brain. I have intense seizures, right? And so I got very scared as a young person. Then after a year of rest out of school, because my father wants me to rest, my father came up and had this amazing idea. He came up and said, Jasper, I think God is calling you to be a pastor. I said, what in the world? Why? <laughs> now, let me give you a little background. If you have an Asian parent, you actually have no choice but to follow. And so I said, yes, sir, I'm going to boarding school. And so I went to boarding school, took theology by God's grace. People from that school forced me to study the Bible. I don't know if I want to say that by God's grace. But I was forced to do it. By the grace of God, I found Jesus. Amen? Amen. There's a quotation from a favorite author that says, Grace is an attribute given to undeserving human beings. We do not seek for grace, but grace was sent in search for us. Amen? I was not searching for grace at all. I was not searching for Jesus, but Jesus found me. To make the long story short, I committed my life to be a pastor, was sent to Indonesia to be a pastor of a church called Jakarta International Seventh-day Adventist Church. I was also an evangelist for Amazing Facts Ministry during that time for two years. So I was preaching as an evangelistic meeting. But let me just backtrack a little bit. When I was 11 years old, I used to remember my grandma has this camera. Now, if you have a Filipino grandma, she would always say, hey, there's a wedding, you come video it. And so I would take videos of weddings, funerals, take videos of people crying. And then my grandma would watch it and she'll be happy. And so all these things my grandma would force me to do. I actually fell in love with filmmaking with this tape recorder. Fell in love with it. Fast forward, I was addicted to video games and all that kind of stuff. All my attention was focused into video games, lost that talent. I was not at all interested. Now, fast forward to the future. I was now a pastor in Jakarta International 70 Adventist Church. I was doing ministries, and I was, one time I said, you know what, I'm very curious. Let me Google my name. Have you ever tried that before? <laughs> so I Googled my name. It's not narcissist. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just curious. <laughs> and so I typed in my name, and I found so many hits about the sermons that I used to preach a long time ago. Now, these are sermons that I'm not proud at all. These are Sermons that are fire and brimstones, you know, that, that we're not supposed to be preaching. Anyways, or be preaching in a more tactful way. Anyway, so I was preaching that, and then I found a, this is a picture of me, look. That's a picture of me when I was 22 years old. I'm 29 now. That was when I was 20 years old, preaching in Indonesia, 80% Muslim, right? Indonesia is a country that is 80% Muslim. It's difficult to come in as a Christian and do ministry. And so anyways, that video, I looked at it and said, wow. That sermon was crazy, you know? But then I looked at the views. If you look at the views, that's actually 260,000 views in a Muslim country. That's crazy. I said, what? 260,000 views? That's crazy. And again, I won't, I won't even share the sermon anymore. That's crazy. So many people have, have, have searched about it, and then I watch the Amazing Facts Indonesia YouTube channel, and there's a lot of people who watch these sermons, and in Facebook, there's actually a message request corner, and I've watched all those people message me, and they said they were brought to the church, and they, they came in contact with the church because of the sermons they've watched. That's crazy, and I told myself, wow, this is such a good opportunity to do media ministry, and so I did a little research, and I found... The same thing that Justin found, staggering, staggering um, statistics. Now, this is kind of old, but I'm sure that the, the recent um, uh, statistics is much more. In Facebook, the population in the internet right now, in Facebook, there's at least 1.9 billion users. This is old. It's, so I think, 2016. YouTube right now is 1 billion users, 600 million users for Instagram, 317 million users on Twitter and 300 million users on Snapchat. Let me ask you a question. Is that a mission field, yes or no? Is that a mission field? Yes. Do we need budget to reach out these people? Yes. 
Oh, that's a... Do we need budget to reach out these people? Yeah, yeah we need budget, right? The, uh, that I struggle with this because most of the, the time we don't want to give budget to reach out to these people, right? And most of the time, who, people who want to dedicate in YouTube or Instagram, they end up homeless because no one really gives them money. But anyways, the point is that this is a mission field, amen? And we should be taking advantage of every opportunity to reach out these people. So I said to myself, what do I do? I need to take advantage of this. Now, at this time, I got a hold of, of some cameras that I do as my hobby besides doing pastoral work. And so I was reading a quotation. I love Ellen White, and so sometimes I do devotionals and read her books, right? And there's a quotation that I have interpreted it wrong, but I think by God's grace, it turned out good, right? This is what it says. Christ Object Lesson, chapter 18. The earth is now marred and defiled by sin. Yet even in its blighted state, much that is beautiful, beautiful remains. God's object lessons are not obliterated. Rightly understood, nature speaks of her creator. So that's one of my devotionals. And I said, wow, that's powerful. That means nature talks about God, right? But this is how I interpreted it before. Is it possible to make nature videos, put it in the internet, and when people watch it, God is talking to them. <laughs> That's not how the verse meant, right? <laughs> That's not how what Ellen White said. But I felt like maybe that's what it is. And so I said, why not I make nature videos, put it on the internet, and maybe, just maybe, people will be touched. And maybe God will talk to them. So I would start making nature videos. Now, I'm going to show you my old videos, and please do not judge me. Okay? As soon as you see it, you'll probably be like, why did we invite that guy? <laughs> right? So let me just show you some of the videos that I made that turned out to be like a stepping stone for me to, to what I do now. So I will preach around places in Indonesia, and I'll make videos like this. For example, um, short, short videos, right? Something like that, right? So maybe, maybe, maybe my God is talking to my friends, right? And so I would do something like this too. Walk around. This is in Indonesia. And from then on, I said, man, I'm going to do more videos, right? And so I made a video. This is quite old, but again, do not judge me on this one. I made a video three years ago, if I'm not mistaken. Three years ago. So I made this video. And I'll explain to you why this is significant. Okay, now I don't have any time. You can watch that on Facebook. It's free. But what my point I'm telling you is this, right? I made it two years ago. And the end of the, 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 the video, I put a verse in it. It says, and God saw everything that he made, and behold, it was very good in Genesis. I posted it on Facebook. Then the next day, I visited Facebook. It went 1.3 million views. 1.3 million views. I said, Man, that's a lot of people, right? Well, that means 1.3 million people saw my video? 
That's crazy. And so that inspired me and said, man, I could start something like this. Maybe I could use the talent and the hobbies that I have to reach a lot of people, right? Because again, these people are mission fields. And so I started to make videos. For example, one of the, I mean, a year ago, a year and a half ago, I made this video. So we spent about a week or two in Tonga, the kingdom of Tonga, and we went swimming with the whales, right, for six days. It was an awesome experience. And so I would start making videos like this. In fact, there's that video, and then I posted a, uh, an Instagram post about it that says this, um, about the story. And then someone commented on that, someone whom I don't know. Um, it's, uh, someone says this. Now, again, pardon the Christ object lesson in there. That's not supposed to be in there. It says, hey, Pastor Jasper, that's my handle on Instagram. It says, would it be possible to get a copy of this picture, the picture of the whale and the baby, right, and th this picture? She was asking a picture for this, uh, uh, a copy of this picture. And she said, my mother was diagnosed with cancer earlier this year. And she said, and on our final day of work, flying her float plane over the ocean, she saw a mother whale teaching her baby to swim and come up for air just like this. The baby would drop down and she would disappear and bring it back up to the surface. It was a promise to her by God that he would do the same. Isn't that crazy? A single photo in a video says, man, this is talking to my mother. I would love to copy of that. A copy of that. And then I send that to, to her and, and that really gave her comfort, right? And the family. It's a promise of God. Of God. And it's a simple video would reach out someone. I said, man, this is such a good thing to do. And so I keep doing this. In fact, one of the first videos I made about the ministry is a video from Adventist Aviation down in Papua, in Indonesia. Now, we have a group of people who, who fly planes and we rescue people out of the jungle. One of the first videos I made, one of the ugliest videos I've ever produced. I put this in Facebook. And someone commented, and I'm not even going to show this to you because I'm going to destroy my self-esteem. But this is what someone commented. She said, this video inspired me that this year I become a missionary pilot for Adventist Aviation in Indonesia or Papua. That's crazy. A simple video. Yet someone said, I want to be a mission pilot. Gave up everything. He was a pilot. Flew to Papua and became a mission pilot there. Just by a simple video. It's simple videos that we make could reach out a lot of people. And I said, man, I want to do this. But the whole problem that I have during this time is I don't even have a mentor. I don't have someone who's teaching me. I don't have any backgrounds about this. I just keep doing what I think I should do. All right? And there's a verse that I really have, like, endeared the most. And this is what Jesus said. And we know this. And Usually our mothers and fathers would nag us about this as kids. But this is the reality, and this is real. This is what the Bible says. He that is faithful in that which is least is also faithful in that which is much. He that is unjust in the least will also be unjust in much. So this is what Jesus said. If you're faithful in that which is little, God will give you opportunities to do more. Are you following? Now, we don't have time to explain the whole verse, but this is what technically what the verse is saying. Faithfulness gives you opportunities. Are you following so far? So the very basic thing that we need to understand is that if I want to start a media ministry, or whatever ministry it is, we need to understand we need to be faithful to whatever God has given us. And so when I was starting, I have no idea what I was doing. I have no equipment. I was broke because I was only a pastor in Indonesia. No money, no funds. But God said, if you're faithful to whatever I'm giving you, 
Whatever it is, I'll give you more. That was the deal, right? So I said, Lord, I'll take you on promise, right? And I'll be faithful to whatever you give me. Let me give you a little story about this one that has inspired me the most. Two years ago, I was in Australia preaching. I was doing an evangelistic meeting or a week of prayer in Sydney, Australia. And there was a place in Australia called the Blue Mountains. And have you heard of Blue Mountains before? Blue Mountains is a cliffy side, almost like the Grand Canyon in, in, in America, but in Australia. And so technically, there's a place where it's almost like a cliff, cliffy side of, of, of Australia. It's famous for people committing suicide. People come there, they would jump off the cliff, right? It's beautiful, though. Anyways... I was there, very beautiful place. I was there doing some, some meetings, and then I also went to visit, right, taking pictures. While I was walking, I met this man, Adam. Adam is a very interesting man because he would approach a tourist. So he came up to me, approached me, and he has this big telescope in his hand, right? And so he came up and said, what's your name? I said, my name is Jasper. Where are you from? All that kind of stuff. And so he said, look, I have a, a deal for you. If you can answer my question... I'll give you a gift. That's what he said. He said, okay. So he gave me a telescope and he said, if you could identify what I'm pointing at on this telescope, I'll give you a gift. So he gave me the telescope. He was pointing at something. I said, oh, this is a bunch of bees in a beehive. And he said, oh, you're a very smart man. He gave me a book, Steps of Christ by Ellen White. I said, what? <laughs> uh, during that time, it's called happiness, right? <laughs> now I was so surprised. I said, What? That's so interesting. Are you Seventh-day Adventist? He said, yeah, I'm a Seventh-day Adventist. Here, there's one more. Great controversy. So he, that's what he does. He just gives book. And I was like, wow, that is so interesting. So instead of being a tourist, I actually end up just talking to this guy. And so I said, why are you doing what you're doing? Apparently, let me just, I'm just compressing this now because I don't have any time. Adam was actually there because he was once very depressed. His wife left him. He was very depressed. Got a divorce. He said, oh, I want to kill myself, you know. I'm, just, I'm tired, you know? So he went to the Blue Mountains and decided to just give books. You know what the Jehovah's Witnesses would do? they just have a stand and put books in there. That's what Adam would do. He placed the accordion. So he would sit down in an accordion, put a stack of books, and he would play, get attention from people, and he would say, free books. That's what he does. Adam would do that every single day. He said, this is such a good ministry. Then Adam was, was giving books one time. He ended up until 11 o'clock in the evening giving books. Then he found out someone. Remember I told you this is a cliffy side of Australia and people want to jump off and commit suicide? Adam was giving books. Suddenly, Adam saw a young girl, 14-year-old girl, already off the fence, about to jump off. Adam stopped that girl, talked to that lady, and Adam said, please, what are you doing? You know, God loves you. God has a plan for you. And then she shouted, nobody wants me. Nobody loves me. Apparently, this, this girl was abused by the uncle. Decided to want to, to jump off. Adam, by God's grace, saved that girl. Amen? By God's grace, God has given him words to talk to the girl, save that woman. And the, the lady said, please, do this every day. Please save a lot more people here. And Adam committed and said, hey, I want to do this. All right? Adam has been giving books in the Blue Mountains for 20 years almost every day. He said he would give 4,000 to 5,000 books every year. That's crazy. He's been doing that for 20 years. And he said 20, and then he said, after the incident with the lady, 15 years later, he was playing his accordion. Suddenly, someone hugged him. And he looked back, and, and the lady said, do you remember me? I was that girl you saved 15 years ago. I came back because I was really impressed to talk to you. I have a husband now, a child. I was now living a good life in Perth. I just came here because I feel that urge just to thank you. And he said, I wish you're still here. And I found you still doing it. I just want to thank you for what you do. And Adam told me this story, and I was like bawling. I was like, wow, that's such a good story. And I said, man. I said, that is so interesting. And and I was talking to Adam and said, why do, we need, why do we need to go to China if Chinese people are here every day? <laughs> why do we need to go to Korea if Koreans are here every day? <laughs> I'm just going to stay here. I don't need to go there. I'm just giving books, right? Now, again, we could have done better. People may argue. I was like, oh, you could have done better, Adam. You're just giving. No, no, no. Adam was faithful to whatever he knows. And he's saving lives in Australia, sharing 
the gospel to whatever the medium he knows. Last few months, I was scheduled again to preach in Australia. I said, you know what? This is two years later. <laughs> I want to go back to the Blue Mountains. Adam is already 80 years old when I met him. Two years later, he's now 82. He said, hey, Adam's still there? And then two years later, Adam is still there. Still giving books. Faithful to what he has. I told myself, man, that's such an inspiration to whatever I have. I will use what I have in the ministry. Amen? There's an old lady who once says this. Listen to what this old lady said. She said, when you gather up the rays of light, when you gather up the rays of light which God has given in the past, then he will give you an increase of light. You listen to that? She said, whatever God has given you before, whatever God has given you now, if you're faithful with that, he will give you more. I told myself, man, if God has given me more, I will be faithful whatever I have. That's why... Number one thing that I did when I was, I don't know what I do, what I'm doing, I said, I want to use whatever I have. The problem with us, especially millennials and young filmmakers, is that we all have gas. Have you heard of gas before? Many of us have gas. It's not, not the gas that you're, you, know, you have in your mind. This is actually real. Gear acquisition syndrome. Gas. <laughs> we think that... As long as we have better gears, we'll have better result. That is the falsest thing, if that's the word falsest. That is so false. Not because you have a better gear does not give you better results. I can literally give you my camera and copy what I do. You cannot do it. It's not about the magic hat. It's about the magician. Amen? It's, it's not, you can't just talk to Gordon Ramsay as a chef and say, wow, your food is so good. What knife do you use? No, you can't do that. It's all, it's all about being faithful to whatever you have, right? And so Caleb here built a ministry by his phone. That's crazy. And so we have this idea of, oh, I think I need more. I think I need more. No, 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 no. You need to be faithful with whatever you have. And so the problem with us as we start the ministry is that we start the ministry thinking, oh, wait till that time I get this new camera. Then I have, no, 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 no. Friends, Content is king. Whatever you have, if you're creating good contents and be faithful with it, you have good results. If you don't believe me, go YouTube this and look at the most viewed videos on YouTube. It's all cat videos filmed in a cell phone. 39 billion views. <laughs> That's crazy. These are all cat videos, right? Because it's all about the content. So just be faithful with what you have. So I took it my, to my heart and said, I'm going to use whatever I have. During this time, I have no mentor, but I do have YouTube. So whatever I do, I'll just YouTube. In fact, the very first camera set that I have owned is a GoPro and a kitchen timer. Now, you know, when you do time lapses, right? So time lapses, it moves very fast. So I said, oh, that's so boring to just put a time lapse. I want a time lapse that moves like this. So I went to Ikea, and they have a kitchen timer that moves like this, timely, every second. And so I put my GoPro in there, paste it, and then put it 20 minutes, and it moves. And so you have a moving time lapse, <laughs> right? Just be faithful with what you have. So make contents like that, right? Make contents like that. Then I start doing photography. I don't know what I was doing, but then again, I have, I have YouTube. So I said to myself, how do I faithful with, be faithful with this? And I would search this in YouTube. How do I maximize my cell phone, right? During this time, I only have an, a, a very, I think I have an iPhone, an old iPhone during this time. And so I'll be out YouTubing, YouTube, how to maximize the quality of my camera through my phone. So would travel the world, take photos. I'll show you some photos that I took with my phone, okay? This was a long time ago. These are some of the photos I took. These are my cell phone photos, right? Uh, some in Austria, some of Paris. These are my cell phone photos. Yeah, I think it turns out really good, right? All my cell phone photos. San Francisco, cell phone photos. Then, you remember what God promised? What did God promise again? If you're faithful, God will give you more, right? God had given me because I was faithful with it. But at least I am. I think I am. <laughs> God provided me a camera. Then he gave me a camera, right? The problem is I don't have any lens. What do you do with a camera without lens? It's nothing, right? So I said, what's the cheapest lens possible that would fit on my Sony? 
So I Googled this up and I found a lens in eBay that is from 1971. A 50 mil 1.4 lens from Canon from 1971. I said, man, okay, <laughs> this is the only thing I can afford. I'll be faithful with it. And again, the principle, if you're faithful with it, he will give you opportunities, right? And so would go take photos with it around the world while I'm speaking around the world. All these areas. Because the Bible said, he that is faithful and just with his least, or faithful in much. After you year, a few years, because I was trying to be faithful by God's grace to whatever he gives me, he gives me opportunities to travel the world and take photos. Can I show you some of the photos that I'm proud of now? Okay, some of the photos, I want to fast forward. Some of the photos I took right now, I hope you can see it's upgrading at least, right? It's like, wow, that's actually developing. <laughs> I'm like, ah, that's actually, that looks the same. <laughs> no, so uh, traveling around the world, this is in Iceland. This is a castle in France. This is in Timisoara in, in uh, Romania. I'm just showing you some pictures that I just want to prove to you that in just one and a half years, you could learn something out of YouTube just by that principle. My favorite uh, site, uh, the, the Rainbow Mountains in Peru. And Paris right here, Slovenia, beautiful area. Um, where was this? Burma. Um, this is the stars in Masari Mara in Kenya, the Milky Way. Um, this is in the Arctic Circle where we spent 10 days in a car <laughs> in the dead of winter. That was interesting. Um, waterfalls in Iceland. Uh, this is our car right there. Um, in uh, Norway, the Northern Lights in Norway, beautiful. Norwegian valleys right here. Um, a waterfall in Indonesia. Some of these photos around the world. Um, There's a photo in the Philippines, one of my favorite. Um, a volcano and a volcano and a volcano. Six volcanoes in one place in Indonesia. And I also went to North Korea. I can't show you some of the photos because um, some, um, yeah, it, it was illegally shot. But anyways, that was in North Korea. Don't ask me why I went to North Korea. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to see some of the photos, you can follow me on Instagram. That's at pa PSTR Jasper. That's a code name for Pastor Jasper. I just took some letters in there. So PSTR Jasper, you can visit our website. It's called tell them, tell them .org. Tell them .org. All our work is there. Some of our photos are there. And also, you can visit our YouTube channel called Tell Them Creatives. Tell Them Creatives. Now, the reason why it's called Tell Them is because you remember when Jesus heals, remember when Jesus healed the demoniac? He said, after he healed him, he said, go tell them. You know, so I felt like when God healed my tumor, God was telling me, go tell them. You know, so that's, that's why the, the ministry called like that. Fast forward right now, that concept of faithfulness equals to opportunities. In just one and a half years of full-time photography, of doing photography around the world, this is one of the photos I took. Three, uh, last year, it's a fr my friends who was in a hammock, that was featured in National Geographic, right? It's just, but it's not, it's not really that big as it's photo of the week, but there's millions of people submitting. So to be in a photo of the week is such a blessing, right? And then another photo was featured in National Geographic. And then another photo got featured in National Geographic recently. Then my favorite photo of all time, one of my favorite ones, got featured in National Geographic. This is actually a photo of the camels from a drone, and their shadows is from, from the sunset. Yeah, so it was timed in broom. So it was featured in National Geographic. I'm really, really happy. And now I'm, I'm, I'm a brand ambassador for one of the competitors for, for Adobe. Uh, it's a landscape photography software. So if you want to buy it, I could yeah, give you discounts. But anyways, <laughs> they gave me an opportunity to be chosen one of the brand ambassadors with all the professionals around the world in just one and a half years. It's possible. With a very simple principle, if you're faithful in that which is least, you'll be faithful in much. Very simple principle. And now, now again, I just want to make this clear. I don't do photography just for me to have Instagram clout, right? That's not what it is. It is for the advancement of the cause. So I would sell these photos and all the, the proceeds that whatever I have, I, I donate it to build uh, jungle churches. So I try my best because I love jungles. You know, so I was really touched by people from the jungles. And so I, would, I tried to build uh, jungle churches or um, 
what's that called? Jungle schools that I hope we have time to show you guys. So I'd make calendars just like this, and I'd sell it, and whatever, whatever we have as proceeds, we will, we will send it to the churches. Um, how much time do I have? Okay. Can I show you a video? Is that okay? This, again, disclaimer, this was shot three years ago. It was not colored well. It was not cut well. I was still starting, but I want to show you. This one has really touched me the most, and I hope this will touch you too, all right? Um, this is how me and Justin actually met. He found this um, uh, video, and he messaged me. He said, hey, and then I flew to Portland, and we met. Right? That, that was really, really a blessing. So I'll show you uh, the video here. I hope you guys enjoy. Share, share, Edja. Let's pray. Dear Lord, may you bless us as we go. May the Holy Spirit be upon us. Bless our minds and give us creativity as we film. In Christ's name, amen. All right, here we go. So right now, this is day two. We're uh, filming these kids here. We're about to film them walking. And then uh, we're going to head out, hop on the plane, hopefully, if the weather stays good, and uh, fly to some other village. The plane is coming at 10, so really we only have like 40 minutes to film them. So I found my spot wherein I could fly my drone. Things are damp and wet now. The kids need to cross there, and we're letting them wait because we're going to film the activity. Hopefully this will not kill my camera. It takes the children an hour to get to the school. They start walking at just the break of dawn. The hike is uphill through unforgiving terrain. Many children need to be pulled out of bed and stuffed into their private cars. Not here. Every step was a sacrifice. It made me think to myself, how far will you go for knowledge? How far will you go for education? How far will you go to find the truth? Yeah, you said. <laughs> so today we're giving them some Kit Kats, that's all we have. Those health reformers, I we apologize. We don't have that much, but we do have some I chocolates, have chocolates. With us. We've decided to give them some chocolates. For some of them, it's their first time to taste one, and the reaction is just priceless. School is not all fun and games here in the jungle. As part of their education, these children tend to their gardens. But even though they're working with their hands, you won't see them frown. They saw manual labor as a joy and a privilege, and they understood that they must work in order to eat. No one was complaining. Everyone concentrated on the task at hand. So now we're filming the kids going to the shower. This is where their shower is. Pass through the rivers. School showers are special here in the jungle. But there's no shower room to speak of. Instead, the children wash off their dirt in the cool stream of a waterfall. No one needs to pay the water bill. No one needs to turn off the tap. The missionaries help the children shower, and the children need to shower. Each of them has only one change of school uniform. They use these uniform every day. They cannot risk them against the elements, so they keep the uniform safe and locked away. In Obotongo, there's no furnished classrooms. They only have grass floors and no furniture. But the furniture is not important. The Spirit of Prophecy says that the character and the spirit that is important. I could see that the children were eager to learn and ready to study, and that was what really mattered. It may be sad to think that many of us who sit in furnished, air-conditioned classrooms can still find things to complain about. But the joy that these children have is an illustration that those who have less tend to appreciate what they have more. So, we're in a rush because we're catching Gary. And we're like, 
40 minutes away. So we need to run. Dude, like nine minutes. Now. Nine minutes? Yeah. Let's go. So we're on our way right now to catch our next flight. We're gonna head to another village. Day two has been really challenging so far. Wow, I'm really tired. So the plane has just landed and we need to walk all the way down, going up. 30 minutes for a foreigner, five minutes for a local. Good. So we don't have time to do an interview, but um, this is Professor Dimara. His wife was here before and they were doing mission work. The wife ate some fruit. She probably had an allergic reaction to it and she eventually died. Tomorrow will be her first death anniversary. He's here visiting. He wants to finish the work here in Obatongo because he doesn't want he doesn't want the work of his wife in vain. Thank you. It's a very inspiring man. Yeah. It's time to say goodbye to the people. Uh, it's always hard to say goodbye. God bless you. Good job, man. You okay? Bye bye. <laughs> oh, no. As I waved goodbye to those children, I realized that they had so much, and yet they had so little. These kids taught me a valuable lesson and that is, their joy is not dependent on material things or the conditions of their circumstances. It doesn't matter to them that they must walk miles to reach near a schoolhouse. They are simply grateful for an opportunity to learn. Friends, where does your joy come from? Is it dependent on your circumstances or based in gratefulness to God for each gift He offers? If you're inspired by this video and are willing to help build more jungle schools or to become a missionary teacher in one of the villages, please contact the email in the description below. God bless you and hope to see you in episode 3. Oh, there's no episode three. <laughs> Anyways, so you can see that in my channel, some of those jungle stuff. So I would go to these jungles because I love the jungles. That's where my heart really is. Um, and so that, that one really touched my heart. So whatever the fo photographs that we have, we try to, to help out the jungles. Right now, we have uniforms for kids. You know, it's not an official school, but it boosts the kids' morale because they walk for two hours, so one hour a day just to reach this kid. These kids actually been attacked by wild boars, you know, 17 species of snake could kill you in Papua. It's crazy. And I wish I could tell you more stories, you know, get stuck in the jungle for three days, twice. Um, <laughs> you know, been eating grass with them. They eat actually grass. The toilet was really interesting. It was, it was an amazing, amazing experience. Anyways, I don't have any time. Fast forward. Remember the video I showed you about, um, talking about faithfulness, that which is least? Remember that video I showed you about that got 1.3, 1.5 million views? Someone sh uh, saw that. This was about three years ago, was in Australia. Someone called me up and said, hey, we saw your video and this was very interesting. Would you mind working for us? And I don't know who this is. I've never had any contact with these people. But they said they, were, they work for Philippine Airlines, marketing department. They said, we want a promotional video for Philippine Airlines just like that. I said, wow, Philippine Airlines, that's so interesting. Now, I don't know in America, but it's not ethical for a pastor to be full-time in a ministry and get another job. I don't know in the, if that's how it works here in America, but in Indonesia or in Asia, it, you cannot find another job, <laughs> right? And so I told them, hey, would it be possible for me to work for Philippine Airlines and I'll give all the money to the ministry? They said, sure, but what I'm after about is the free business class ticket because they're giving us business class tickets. Yeah. And so I said, sure, I'm getting this. And so I give the money away. But anyways, the point is that I said, Lord, I want this again as a ministry. And this was three years ago. I don't know what I was doing. But again, be faithful to whatever you have. And so the first video we made for them, for Philippine Airlines, got 2.7 million views. 2.7 million people watch it. I said, wow, I'm wasting an opportunity here. I need to take advantage of this. The next video, they said, you need to go to this island. You make a video. And so we would go there and make a video. 
So as we are, in fact, I'll show you some of the videos we make. Can we lower down the volume of this, uh, sir? Because the video, uh, the music really is really bad. I did not choose the music. They did. Um, so we would, what they do is they would, would help uh, um, send us to these places and just have fun. They said, just have fun and film your experience, right? So we would go, we would have swimming, we would uh, swim with locals, um, we swam with, with whale sharks. That was, that was really interesting, right? That video got four million views. Four million views. And if you look at the introduction of the video, and again, I don't know, I'm not saying this is supposed to be what you do in your ministry, right? I don't know what I was doing, but this is what I did. I don't know if you're 70 Adventist enough, and if you're an OG 70 Adventist, you'll notice something, right? <laughs> so that's the introduction. <laughs> Did you see that? <laughs> now I was, you know, <laughs> like so I'm, you know, I'm OG, you know. So, <laughs> so again, if you, if you haven't catched that, very fast, that's Ministry of Healing. So you, when I was, at this time, I really love Ministry of Healing. I was reading it, right? So I'm not, I'm not saying you should be doing this, right? This is the only thing I know during this time. Um, but this, but again, faithfulness equals to opportunities. Whatever you have, whatever, take advantage of it. Amen? And you go to the website and also the Facebook page of Philippine Airlines. You have a bunch of 70 Adventist hardcore people. They're commenting, and oh, you guys are 70 Adventists now, and all that kind of stuff. So it was really interesting. <laughs> Faithfulness equals to opportunities. Amen? And then as time goes by, God has given me a ministry. This was back then when I was in Indonesia. I was called up and said, hey, we have this idea. If you've read the Great Controversy, we wanted to go to the places where the Great Controversy was based, go to the Reformation site, and film every single part of it. Right? And they called me up. This is for people from Europe. They said, we want you to be part of our team. We'll buy you a ticket to Europe. We'll spend three months in Europe. And I said, wow, that's amazing. I'm willing to resign because I really wanted to, to do media ministry. But they said, but we don't have a salary for you. <laughs> Would you still come? I said, sure, we'll do it. This time I was just full send. You know, whatever God calls me, you know, creativity over certainty during that time. So I just want to be creative, you know. And so I resigned I left job, my job, went to Europe. I've never seen winter in my life. I went to Europe in winter. I remember packing my board shorts. So I wasn't, you know, from the Philippines. I don't know what I was doing. I only have a few dollars in my pocket. But God said, I will provide for you. Right? And so I flew there. I went to Europe for three months, literally couch surfing. Living on people's couches. I would preach for soup. I would say, hey, can you please, I'll pray for you. I'll, I'll, I'll preach in your church. I'll, I'll preach there as long as you give me some rice and, you know, I need rice. And so <laughs> I'll fly there and stay in Europe for three months without any salary. I have never spent a single penny in Europe. The Lord has provided. Please, by the way, follow our, our, our YouTube channel, um, Lineage, sorry, is that one? Lineage Journey. You can search for that. It's small bite-sized videos about the Reformation. Very short, five, six minutes. You can watch this in your church. We have 42 episodes about that, and we have the, the Seventh-day Adventist history went throughout the, event, the, the places where the, it happened, around America, New Zealand, Australia, and then in, in Switzerland. And now we are on episode three about the, uh, this is a biblical time. So we were going to, I'm going to, next month I'm going to Jordan, Egypt, and Israel, spending one month there filming. So again, this is not paid. We are not paid to do this, you know, but, but by the grace of God, we are happy that, that the church is helping us fund our tickets at least. Um, <laughs> I wish you could give us some more. <clears throat> Anyways. <laughs> So our, that's our website, our YouTube channel. Please do watch that. This has been my life for the past four to five years. I've been traveling around the world, doing contents, creating contents that I'm passionate about, even though, you know, sometimes we're living with very little. You know, Justin, uh, Caleb here, we're, sometimes it's a struggle. And, and if you see me, you probably see me looking like a homeless person with a tripod. Uh, traveling, I don't have anything that I own besides my bag, 
and my clothes. You know, but I always tell people, I might be broke, but I'm stoked. <laughs> stoked for Jesus, amen? <laughs> I would travel around living in a van in Australia with my cousin, creating contents. That's, a va that's his van. Um, living in a tarp. Uh, uh, the back of the car, we're pulling a, a wagon. Um, the Lord provides. I, would, I wish I could tell you more stories, uh, but I don't have any time. But I'm telling you, if you're faithful with what you have in your church, I tell you, my friends, God will give you fruit. Whatever it is, it's not rocket science. The Lord said, whatever you have, be faithful with it, and I'll provide for you. I've been traveling now, my dear friends, and by the grace of God, Justin gives me opportunities to have a little bit of money, but most of the time, I don't have any salary. Travels the world, but the Lord is able to provide. Amen? In ways that I could not even imagine. Ways that I could not even imagine. I think the last story I want to tell you is, I was in Australia, and this is just a testament on how powerful God is. I was in Australia, and, and I'm preaching there in Australia and doing some, some content. But if you're Filipino, the hardest thing to do is to get a visa. Every single time you come into a country, they ask you how much money you have, or before you come into the country. And they'll sign you a visa, an opportunity for you to go to the country. And so during this time, I was praying. I was in Indonesia. Lord, I don't know what to do. I don't have any money. I have a bank account now, but I only have 100 bucks in it. And so the Australians ask me how much money I have. And before I get to the office in Australia, on, on the embassy of Australia, they're asking me how to print my bank statement, to print it out. But again, I only have 100 bucks in it. This is recorded, so I'm going to be careful. So I said, Lord, I don't know what to do. And so I prayed, but God gave me peace that night, so I slept. The next day, I, re I received a message from Bank of America, the only bank in the world that gave me a bank account because so I don't have a job, right? I was traveling. And so they said, oh, we're giving you, wow, you were actually giving me a bank account? That's amazing. And so they gave me a bank account. I only have $100 in it. And so I was praying. The next day, I received a notification. You received $5,000 from a church department. I'm not going to name because I'm going to get in trouble. And so I, told my, I called them up and said, hey, I've been working for you, for you guys in, in making contents, but I don't remember working for you worth $5,000. And so they called me up and said, oh, we made a mistake. That's not for you. <laughs> <laughs> I, said, I said, hey, can I borrow the money? I said, sure, as long as you return it tomorrow. I said, yeah, I just, I just want to show those trails and have five grand. And so I, <laughs> I, I printed up. I was, I've never been proud in my life. <laughs> have five grand. <laughs> Give it to the Australians. The Australians said, sure. They, they give me a visa, signed it. The next day, the next few days, I flew to Australia. Of course, the next day, I returned the money and broke again. But the point is, <laughs> the Lord is able to provide. Amen? <laughs> now, I'm consuming so much time. If it's God's will, it's always God's bill. Move forward. Do it. I promise you, friends, he will give you opportunities you could never imagine in your life. Remember the story of Peter? Remember that story? He came out of the boat. He actually sank. And we always use Peter as an example of being unfaithful to Jesus. He's like, ha, oh, ha, look at Peter. He sank. He, he, he has no faith, right? But if you think about it, Peter was the only one who walked in water. The rest of the disciples did not. You know why? Peter was the only one willing to step out of the boat. And I, prom I tell you, friends, I'd rather be broke with Jesus than be in the church pew comfortable without him. Step out of the boat. And you may not walk on water, but God will give you opportunities to see miracles in your life. Amen. Let's do something big for God, amen? amen? In this conference, man, in the Philippines, we don't even have people giving us support like this. No one is giving, giving, giving classes. But you guys here in Florida, you have a youth director, you have people, pastors, who's hosting this. And we need more people, friends, in that front line in the internet world to do something big for him, amen? amen. I want to do something more for God. What about you? Let's pray. Father in heaven, there's so many things to say yet, so little time. But I pray now, Father, that as we continue on to study, that we'll be pumped, that we'll move forward and be stoked working for you, Father. Bless us, Lord. Give us inspiration. Inspire us every day. And I, I pray, Father, that you please bless the talents that you have given us, that we may be faithful with it, that, we'll be moved for, that we move forward, Lord, to advance your cause in this generation. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. God bless you, everyone. Enjoy the rest of the classes. Hello, thank you all so much for watching today's service. We hope you enjoyed and were blessed by God's word. If you'd like to see more uplifting content, PlantationSDA.tv has a lot more. 
if you have a prayer request or something's bothering you. PlantationSDA.org lets you share it with us and we're guaranteed to pray for you. If you're ever in the Plantation, Florida area, we'd love for you to drop by. You're always welcome here. Thank you again so much for watching and have a blessed day.